Morning boys and girls, it's Thursday, it's another great day to be alive and I hope, have you still got your jammies on? Well, we're going to go for a walk and up into the Moor Mountains to learn something about the stone walls that make the ditches to divide the fields and up the country lanes. But let's sing Jesus Loves Me first of all. Sing along! Lovely, lovely song! Words whistling, spring's coming! Boys and girls, I'm in the middle of the Mourne Mountains. You can see the mountains all around me. What a beautiful day it is to walk right in the heart of God's creation. If you love walking, you like walking, you should come to the Mourne Mountains. When you come to see it, you'll want to come back again and again and again. And if you noticed, the both sides of this walkway, this lane, this path, they are stone walls, miles and miles and miles, probably hundreds of miles of stone walls that are used all over. And these were built um, maybe over a hundred years ago, when before there was diggers and tractors and machinery. The families would have come together and they would have cleared the land, cleared the fields and built a territory or a, like a boundary. And here we've got Binion. It's famous. Many people come to it to climb it. And part of Binion, you can find the, the famous Amorne Wall. And beyond Binion, the Blue Lock. Oh, there's also the Binion Lock. So many reasons people come to walk all around the Amorne Mountains. You can see Binion in the distance. You can see these stone walls. But these stone walls are so many things I can think about. They were built initially to keep the animals safe because they didn't use fences because the ground was so hard and the stone was there. So why they would use it to build a fence and that would keep the sheep or the cattle. Not only would it keep them in, it would keep other animals from getting into the wrong fields. And also, whenever I think of a wall, these walls are they're, they're not easy to build. The stones are very, very heavy. They're very, very strong. So it would take a good craftsmanship. And many of the families connected with stone building in Kilkeel, their sons and their grandsons and their great-grandsons were also, um, or great-grandfathers and fathers were also used to build um, and it's passed on to their sons and grandsons to be stonemasons, to be stone builders. And you could, I couldn't move. If I tried to push this off, you couldn't move it. It's so solid and it's so strong. And I thought there's good craftsmanship here and a good strong worth ethic is needed. And that's what God wants from us. He doesn't want us to be lazy. If you're going to be a stonemason, you've got to be willing to roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty and be willing to work. And throughout the Bible, God often talks about us or his 
craftsmanship. He wants us to be willing workers. He wants us to be ready workers. He doesn't want, want us to be lazy. God hates lazy people. And whether you're school time or learning in school, work hard at school. Try to learn hard. When you're playing, get involved. And you know to see stones. You're not going to see one stone makes up a wall. There are many stones and they're all put together. There's big stones, there's middle stones, and then you get smaller stones. And you can imagine if I was to take that stone away and set it in the middle of the field. There'd be no purpose for that. The stones have to be together to form the wall. Like your classroom, there's not just you in the classroom, alone with your teacher. The, all of the children in your classroom make up the wall or make up the classroom. And that reminds me of the church. The church is the body of Christ. The church is every individual Christian, every individual person who knows the Lord Jesus as their Saviour, and they make up the body of Christ for the church. And together, it's important to come together. Why do you go to church? You go together or Sunday school or assembly to sing, to learn about God, to enjoy God together, and that's the purpose. But if you notice over the hill, there's a little house, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the field and have a wee look to see what's inside it. Come on. So I'm inside the house. Do you want to come over? Do you want a cup of tea? Come on over and have a wee look. I'm up close to the house and I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I thought I could invite you in for a cup of tea, but I noticed there's no door in the house and there's no windows. And then I looked up and I could see this guy and I thought, I can't wait to see this guy from inside the house. And I realised there's no roof in the house. I, I thought, a house needs a roof, it needs windows, it needs door to keep it safe, to keep it secure, if to keep it away from the rain or the birds. And I thought, Inside here, there's no tiles or no wooden floor, no carpet. It's grass. Imagine grass growing in your house. I thought, there's no tea, there's no cups, there's no kitchen. I can't even go for a week's sleep, there's no bed. It's a derelict house. And I thought, that's what happens if you don't look after your house. If it's not well maintained, the roof will eventually rot, it'll fall off. If the windows aren't cleaned and looked after, they're going to rot and eventually fall out. The same with the door. Intruders might come, thieves might come, and steal the windows, steal the door, steal everything inside the house. And I thought, the only thing's left here is a shell. And I thought, that's like life, that's like our bodies. The body, the Bible talks about our body, our bodies are the temple of the living God. In other words, God wants us to look after our lives and to look after our bodies. When you become a Christian, we have a responsibility to please God with our lives. And if we don't look after our bodies, and then eventually, if you don't brush your teeth, they're going to rot and they're going to fall out. If you don't uh, watch what you're eating, you're going to get overweight and eventually become unhealthy. But eventually, but this is quite an old house. And now Naturally, every day we live, we get a day older, and every year we are a year older, and we, we're not here to live forever. Eventually, our life on this earth will be over, and the only thing will be left is our bodies and are put into the grave, and that's the end. But within us is the part that connects with God, and that is the soul. And even though when you leave this earth, your, your, the body is put into the grave, but the soul is a part that lives on with God forever. And that's why, boys and girls, while people are so preoccupied, with their homes and their cars and even their bodies, they can neglect the very soul. And the Bible says, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? In other words, this is a beautiful field with a beautiful fence. It's kept safe and secure. It's just got grass. It's just reseeded. A lovely picture. And it's got a house. But the farmer, if you've got, if you've got a lovely fence and a beautiful field, but your body... When you leave this life, even though you leave millions of pounds in this earth, what does it matter if you don't, if you're not a Christian and your soul is going to perish and be lost forever? That's why boys and girls, when you're young and you're not thinking about buying a house or a car or a farm or anything that's of value, all you do want to do is live and enjoy life. And that's what God wants. He wants us to enjoy life and he wants us to have joy because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And just like this grass, this grass has just been reseeded. You can see the grass here is very, very young. It's just been reseeded recently. 
This grass wasn't here a hundred years ago. You weren't here a hundred years ago, or fifty years ago, or twenty years ago. Every year brings new life to this world. Every year babies are born. After four years, they come into P1, P2, P3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then they go to high school. That's life just rotating, just going on. But while you are in the rotation, while you're in your class, don't be like the rich fool who says, I don't want God because I've got everything in this world. Because one thing you're not born with, and that's God, but one thing you can have while you're alive, and that is God. And God is the most wonderful person in the whole world. He's the God of this world. He's so big and he's so strong and he's so mighty, yet he's interested in that little piece of grass. And if he knows all about that piece of grass and the wee bird in the air, how much more does he not love you and care for you and want you, do he wants to come into your life not because he wants to rule you with him. No, he wants to come into your life to be with you, to love you, to look after you, to protect you. It's a real love story and you'll find the God of the Bible is the most wonderful, caring God you'll ever imagine. So whenever you think of a derelict house, it reminds you of life that just quickly passes by and reminds you of our bodies, how we've got to look after them and care for them. But also a reminder, we're not in this world forever. We are just passing through and there's only one thing that is important in this world it's what you've done with jesus really enjoyed that if you get an opportunity when the weather's good you're able to get out and about go up to the mourn mountains and go for a walk stretch your legs and see the beautiful views of god's wonderful creation what about the song go tell the good news <laughs> Jesus Christ his son. Why do we do these assemblies? That's the very reason the good news of Jesus Christ God's son. That's it for today. We're back tomorrow. See you.